Um, uh, and uh, he's going to talk to us about baking your SAS, S A A, capital S. Um, and as Zara mentioned, you can thank him for the awesome bread that's in the back. The reason why we Sorry, there's a microphone. Okay, um, this may or may not be a vote for something. It's, it's out there. I'm just saying. There's going to be times for this one today. <laughs> which is weird. Um, I didn't expect it either. One of them is Wizard Development, we're a dev shop, we would like to dev, we do, we dev well. And the other one is Big Cycle. Big Cycle, as you might wonder, does it right, right? And none of you are my customers. This isn't a sales pitch, nothing about it at all. In fact, I wanna talk about bringing Big Cycle to production, right? And um, that's our screenshot, you know, you can tell it's accurate. Um, so, who here has been to Brooklyn JS? Right? Brother, sister, husband, all right? So you've been to 61 Local, and you've been to 61 Local, you might have gotten hungry, and you might have had one of these sandwiches, right? I like this, I also like their, their cheese one, I like the cheese, um, but it's good. And if you've had this, then you've also eaten the bread that's back there. All of you other people who didn't raise their hands before, if you ate at 61 Local, you probably got some of the bread. And if you had bread, it was baked by Ben Queen. Ben Queen's around the corner, they make bread. And, um, and you've eaten bread baked with big cycle. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> so we want to break cycles not out yet. Only Ben Quee's using it, right? And so we've been working on this. We care a lot about it. We want to bring it, you know, to production, right? And we want to, we've got to launch our SaaS. We've got to do all this kind of stuff. It's sort of been a dream, you know, of most people who know how to code, like, oh, I can make a SaaS. That's just like money all the time. And, <laughs> and we need to find people who give you money, and that's the part you forget. But let's <laughs> ignore all of that, right? And let's just talk about, let's make sure it keeps working if you have more than a couple of people using it. So this was Big Cycle Production um, a couple weeks ago, and we're paying zero dollars for it, and it's on one dyno, which is a virtual server. And um, it, it says Unicorn, that's a Node.js framework for serving Ruby applications. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we use Angular, we're going to be using some React, you know, it, it's, it's, good, it's good stuff, but the lessons here go to any kind of whatever your language is, it doesn't really matter. So, like, what can we do with this, right? Um, this, is, this is actually a unicorn. So unicorn is very similar <laughs> to, um, to, to cluster, no cluster, it works stuff out. I don't think cluster does as much. It's been unstable for many years, I don't know. But anyway, so the, the question is, what is production are you? What's bringing your app to production, right? And the real question is, what's production are you for you, right? For us, we want to, like, get requests from all over the world. Like, I want this, except I want it to be real and not something I found on the internet. <laughs> and, and, like, what would it take for us to serve requests from all over the globe, for all the people making bread, for all the people like us who eat bread? I'm sorry, Brooklyn's on our own, this talk's not good. Um, 
So I have this here. Um, so for us, we want to be able to handle uh, the load, we want to do media events, we want to make sure that I can quickly recover from errors, um, and that like the things we say it does, it always does, and that we know if it doesn't so we can fix it right away, because that's going to happen. People make mistakes, machines don't make, well, I guess they make mistakes, you know, it, it's, errors happen all the time. Failure is not one of those things I hope it doesn't happen. Failure is one of those things I hope I can recover from quickly. Right? Specifically, like media events fast, 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 right? And and like we just we just need to know what's going on, right? And it's really like those that dino that Herbie died for doesn't tell you anything. Um, so the first step, right, is is performance. And so with one dino, right, if we want to handle like uh, New York Times press article, which I'm gonna pretend I know that it's gonna do this, but if it's a thousand people a minute, right? That seems like a lot of people, and it's actually not all that many people as far as like really popular websites go, but I think for a bakery, wholesale bakery management app, which I didn't even tell you, it's like you take the orders from the clients, and like what dough are we gonna make today, and what ingredients do we need a week from now? Like it handles all that whole flow that you need to like not run out of flour, so you can always make your bread. You gotta make bread every day, because bread is alive. I've learned a lot about bread lately. <laughs> um, so if we want to serve this, like that 60 milliseconds of request with one app server. And even if we got the four you know, and periods and a lot of stuff, it's still 60 milliseconds. And with Rails, it's not like that. So you know, <laughs> um, with uh, two app servers, it's 120 milliseconds. You know, we can do that. So I, I got two. There he says two. Um, and I use this tool called Apache Benchmark, AB. Um, and it goes like brew install, AB. Got it. And if you run it, it's gonna go, and I think it's gonna do a thousand requests, you know, and I hope it doesn't remember a minute, and I wanna do five at a time maximum. I can probably turn that up and see my, you know, my two dinos stream a lot more. And it's gonna send all these requests out. You know, I did this from a MacBook Air, well, not this connection, you know, but but this should tell me like how fast I can I respond. And my this is our homepage where we do nothing. We just render one single screen, but we haven't spent any time optimizing it. Not even for copy. We could barely say what Big Cycle does at this point, but th at least it is what New York Times, you know, people are New York Times are kind of, they're not, they don't want bakeries, like three of them did. You know, I want to find those three people, but like, you know. So, what happened? We had 95% of the requests in 180 milliseconds, and that is better than 120. So, so success, we're done. Get on my top, thanks. <laughs> There's a lot more to do. And, and it really does. It, it's like, it feels good to know that our baseline. Is, is that, you know, but it's actually doesn't quite represent users, right? So, it, who knows what the Lynx web browser is? It's a command line web browser, it doesn't want images or JavaScript or style sheets, and if you really want to feel good about your app, go there, it's even useful, and it's just, a, it's a little bit of a mess. Uh, we use graphical browsers, right? And so graphical browsers will go and load images and style sheets and JavaScript, I think this one's for JavaScript, and, you know, it does all the things. Um, so we need to, like, when you go to a website, it actually loads all this stuff, right? And, and all this takes time to load, and then it takes time to render, and then everything's gotta happen on the client side. So let's, let's dig a little deeper, right? Um, if you wanna do the equivalent of AB for a web browser, you probably need to farm out to something that can start up a thousand web browsers, or five web browsers <laughs> for refreshing the past, right? Um, Sauce Labs, Browser Stack, these are ones, they all use Selenium which you had in the install. Um, and there's Selenium, which puts Firefox, and, and WebKit, and all sorts. Um, and you're gonna write something like this, and I, I tried to write this in JavaScript, I tried to write this, yeah, it's not the Java that Selenium's written in. Uh, this is the simplest, you basically say like, you get a thing, you do a thing, you fill it out, and you can test your whole app. That's not, I'm not gonna dig in all that today, but like, you really wanna do this. You wanna like, if people use my app, is it gonna follow up, or not just if people go to the home page, it's gonna follow up. Well, we did the home page as well. You know, and since most people aren't bakery owners, it's enough for me. Um, I was told once by a boss who may or may not be in the audience that you should do this after hours if you want to do this. Just do this. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so um, the next portion, though, once you've got like, can I get the index? You know, uh, <laughs> uh, is can does it? Is the user experience when you load it? Is the browser performance worth it up there, right? So this will be the browser performance. Um, page speed, Google page speed is really cool. It tells you a bunch of stuff that like Google would like to see. Google Web Crawler even pays a little bit of attention to some of these metrics. So uh, Google has announced a 
several times and nobody's listening, but they'll penalize you if you don't do things well and you don't provide a good experience. Um, I don't know how they penalize you, you know? But this, so I ran it, and it said, I'm doing all my JavaScript first, and it's slowing shit down, and it's giving a bad you know, name. If we look through the waterfall, we probably see a lot of stuff blocked by the JavaScript. Uh, so whatever JavaScript, whenever you include a JavaScript file, unless you specify it as async, it will won't render anything because what if you do a document right, which is something that if you're a new JavaScript developer, that was a thing. Um, <laughs> so if you look at our template, right, this is uh, pretend it's mustache. Um, this, <laughs> you know, we put all our JavaScript up front, it looked much, you know, and so like I took a good hard look at it and I thought about it and I said, well, we really only need a shift for the IE, and wouldn't you believe Baker's run old IE? <laughs> Um, and most of the stuff we do later, and I even took out the Google Maps thing because what do you know, there's no map on our homepage. And I got it to lazy load, and that was, that was nice. It was good to, you know, defer everything until it was actually needed. And so we were able to reduce, you know, I ran my test, I pushed the production, do that. Um, and we were able to not get that warning anymore. <laughs> it has other suggestions, you should look at them, and not during the talk. Find out what they mean, and find out if they're, you know, if they're worth for you to invest time in. Yes, a lot of them are. So, I don't know how much less JavaScript I learned, but I know it's less. <laughs> um, you should measure first. It's always good to know if what you're doing is actually an improvement, or it's the thing that makes me feel better about what I did, you know? Because uh, both things can happen. And I was like, well, what else can I do, right? So I got all the Google suggestions. Let me pretend I'm on an iPhone 4 on, on a 3G connection, you know, trying to like maybe run into 34th Street or something. And you can do this in Chrome. You hit this little button, which brings up the uh, dev kit deal with the pretender phone, and you say, I got a really slow connection. I turned off caching, which is a big deal. And I refresh. And what happens? Well, not a lot. Not quickly, anyway. <laughs> and this is humbling. Like, we want to be a mobile app. One of the things in bakeries is they don't have, it's all PC apps. There's nothing that's mobile. You can't do anything when you're not there. And this sucks. Now, mind you, this isn't where most people are going to spend their time, but like, at least our homepage sucks. Um, for mobile on an old phone, on an old connection. And, you know, apparently Bakers didn't go in there because they're great at technology. You know, they, they, they love something else and they, had, they don't know much about computers. So this took 14 seconds. Um, at home on my laptop, where I do most, spend most of my time, um, I used to joke I used to only develop apps for a MacBook Air running from. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it was really quick. And, you know, under a second, 800 milliseconds, the full browser ready, everything was ready and loaded by then. Um, so if you look at what things are big, our fonts were big, our images was big, um, you know, and we talked to our users, we talked to a bunch of bakers. They don't use a Mac, yeah, a really nice MacBook uh, on a fast connection. They're in a bakery. Maybe they have a signal. Maybe they have an old computer. Flour kills everything. <laughs> so they don't invest a lot in the machines around the offices and stuff. Um, so what did I do? Um, I, I kept testing. I was like, I made sure everything had cache headers, so when you refresh the page, it doesn't have to load again. Um, and even on that phone, 603 milliseconds, not bad. It's not 200, you know, but okay, it's better, and we still have work to do, and that's all right. You know, so moving on. <laughs> what else can we do to make us production ready? How can we, how can we get there? So I'm gonna use a CDN, uh, Content Delivery Network. And they are uh, somebody with servers, and they, they want to be between you, between your users and you, and they promise to have more servers than you do, closer to your users, and they can pull up all your assets or maybe certain pages and stuff much faster than you possibly could. Especially faster than your one career to run you down, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, they have, sure, they have more pipes than you. Um, there's two ways you can use them, and this is for any kind of app, right? So you can put your whole app in front of it, right? Or you can just serve certain things through it. Um, if you want to go Amazon, you know, you can use um, CloudFront, and CloudFront's great, but if you want to like put your whole app in front of it, it's expensive. You need a custom SSL cert, we need to have SSL these days. We always actually really need to have SSL, but it's affordable these days. CloudFront, I just did it to you for free. I imagine Amazon will catch up eventually. They will issue a cert for you and not even talk about it. They're like, oh, yeah, it's totally built included. Um, the, there's advantages to both, right? If your app is a cred app, like mine is, you know, which does some magic on the back end as well, like, like this is totally cool. I'm 100% putting my app uh, you know, behind Cloudflare because they're gonna, they're gonna be up more often than I am. Um, you know, they're, they're gonna have more demands than I do, right? And magic millions. 
Um, and I can put the whole thing there. And when we are down, our homepage will still load. When we are down, cache sections will load. Um, you know, and it, bakeries are a really low margin business. Like, if you are actually down, we're doing other things, not, we're not relying on Cloud Park for this, but you know, if we're down, like, and you can't print, make your orders, and restaurants don't get their bread, you might go out of business. Like, that's one day, right? That's scary, right? So we're, we're, we're working on like offsiting recipes for the future and stuff. Um, but like like that, it really helps that something stays up. And if the whole if the CDN's in front of you, you can actually cache all the important parts. Like recipes don't actually change from day to day, just the quantities do. And if I got yesterday's quantities, great, I can still do business. That's what our users do. So um, there are also different prices. I mean, seriously, six hundred bucks. Come on, Amazon. <laughs> I mean, not like Round Fifty Three or their TNS, all that stuff. But, uh, um, and if you do run something that like you need people are gonna like. Fuck you, you know, and then and, and DOD, DOS you. Cloudflare will totally get your back. They're like, yeah, we're just like being, you know, 500 gigabytes a second today. You know? And you can't do that. You're not a hurry. So, um, really though, I'm not exactly sure, <laughs> you know, what I feel about it, but it, it's working out. I've grown on it since, since I started this. And it's really easy to set up. You basically give them your DNS, which is what I didn't like, because I figured it was on a better DNS, but you know, whatever. And um, I told Amazon, I'm like, hey, go use their DNS. And it used to be DNS simple, which I also didn't really like as much. I like it, you know, like Amazon better, but I don't have you don't have alias zone apex records. If you know what that is, you want it, you know, and it's for her. So they copied the stuff, turned on my cell, they do it all automatically. Literally they changed last week. And there we go. And they've got this weird JavaScript thing for emails. <laughs> um, they will provide SSL, but not all the way to your app, just to them, right? And so most people get hijacked by copy shops, maybe, I don't know. The NSA can totally get in from Cloudflare talking your app. Nobody cares about Baker's recipes, but um, at the very least, you should have an SSL cert on your end, not your app. And this is actually because Cloudflare is cool. It can be a self cert, self signed one. Um, SSL Labs tells you all sorts of cool stuff. Make sure you're tip top. You know, um, start SSL if you have a hobby project. 100% free, totally cool. EFS coming out something in a little while. It's not out. I forgot his name. Um, so like. Once we got it in there, what happened? And it was, uh, it saved 10% of HTML. It, it just zipped my HTML, which is something Rails did not do. Um, and it made sure, you know, and it like, saved everything you know, nice and close to where people were. But honestly, we're not that far from us from North Virginia, where we're up doing tons of stuff. Or 90% of the internet seems to live. Um, in the Amazon Data Center. But so, like, that's, you know, okay, 1% of the total thing. But what it really did was if all the assets were cached and it held on to it. But by default, like you don't put other headers to hold on to it for a day. I put headers saying hold on to it for a year because I make sure I digest my asset paths. That means like I will never get more than one request for any image I serve, and they will handle the rest in perpetuity. When I load up, when I get a new image and I change the path and whatnot, they just grab it. And so the New York Times comes, everybody looks like Colonel or Links. Right? And everybody looks like they're not loading anything but the HTML page in my app and anything else. And that's just nice, you know. Right? <laughs> that's what I want. And now I can get it, maybe I can get it. So, the other steps. And I didn't like nearly as much about these because these are really dense topics. And it's different from everything. But you want to be able to recover. And in order to recover, you need to know what the fuck's going on, how it feels going on. Um, <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's all sorts of things you need to know. And you're going to get queries, you have a database of some kind. It really doesn't matter. New Relic and Skylight will instrument different kinds of databases. Liberato will too, but they, they actually are good for your own processes. Like, we've got a lot of batch processes. Like, we'll go through and we learn process stuff every so often when the orders come in and all that. We do it delayed. And we want to know how long they take. We want to know how all this works. We want to know if like, all of a sudden it's taking a lot longer. If you don't have, like, log files are great and all, but you got to read them and you're not going to but a pretty graph. So, like, a beautiful pretty graph will do it. Liberato gets you that. You know that it's kind of like have those as well. Your logs. You, logs are useful. You're not going to be able to graph everything you think of. So, if you move, if it moves, but as Etsy says, if you move, if it moves, graph it. And if it doesn't move, probably graph it too. You know? <laughs> But paper trail and Splunk will let you search, let you find the time it happened and see what happened before and after. That's very useful. Graphs don't quite always do that. Um, exception logging, exceptions have a ton of information in their stack trace, the environment at the time and all that. Urbit is the open source version. It was really easy to set up an open source thing and not pay them 
40, 80, 100 dollars a month. Uh, but they are good and have a much nicer interface on airbrake.com than the open source survey. But I guess patches are both. When you come in time to when there is a problem, you need to know. Um, Pingdom will text you when something doesn't respond. PagerDuty's got this whole alerting scheme, and I think they got a much better handle on like what an alert is, what it means to you, and why. Why it's bothering you, you know, and like what when it gets resolved, and you can be a lot smarter about your alert. You want to be, you want to be smarter about your alert. Um, because alert designs the thing. Also, harms are the worst because the people ignore them and then you ignore real things. If you're ignoring it, then why don't you turn it off? Like, I mean, like, don't do it. it it's equivalent of like being really bad at turning a dog or something. Like, you said, you're with the dog and you're doing it to yourself. Like, <laughs> just, just don't do it. Um, if you have an issue, most most of your monitor may be an issue at the endpoint that you hit. Um, but don't just hit your homepage. Hit a route that goes, hey, database, are you cool? And hit a, hit a route that goes, hey, cash, are you cool? Hey, register, are you cool? Hey, you know, as even your email service, like, hey, because you can talk to it, go, hey, what's up? And it's gonna go, hello, you know, and you're, and you're gonna go down slow and dump. <laughs> but you can talk to it. And maybe you should know if your email goes down. That's an important to your user, it's important to you. You know, and so you can do all that. You can write a little class, a little object or whatever that does this stuff, do it, and then return the error. Um, so the last part is about keeping promises, you know, and so we, we want to, you know, we promise we're going to help bakeries run their bakers, and things happen all the time, and, and it's it's pretty bad. Like when things happen, but these aren't your data centers, these aren't your machines, these aren't your networks, um, unless they are in great. But you're probably doing something wrong if they are. I mean, at least in the beginning, um, and because it's a lot more expensive, a lot harder to change things. You know, and a lot of modern software development is about the ability to change things easily without much consequence. So this is a hard drive getting a thermite perm through it, and so you should have backups. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and make sure they're running every day, and alert if they don't, because scheduled things stop being scheduled. Your task that you need to do will stop running the alert on them. But the effect will start a thing that somebody else can do it for you, and they know it's cool with that. Don't assume they're really doing better than you might even. You know, just, just check, what's the day? Hey, okay, cool. Um, and then if you don't know how to restore, then those are many precious minutes that you should already grade. I mean, <laughs> I've been angry at me before. Um, and schedule. Big part of Big Cycle schedule processes. And they are scary because what if they don't run? What if they fail? What if I'm sleeping? God damn it. You know, so, so like, put, some, put something on it. You know, and make sure you're putting something on it reasonable because I really don't care if Twitter misses an update at 4 in the morning. And you know, I like it's fine. You know, we're good, you know, like, like make sure you do at least the bare minimum and turn it on as you get burned. And that's probably better than turning on too much and ignoring it forever and sending through actual emergencies. Um, in the end, like if you're not production, you know, just because you're production ready doesn't mean you have a good product, but not being production ready probably means you don't have a good product. You know, it is probably gonna be bad. And and if you are production ready, and you do a user feedback, and you've done a lot of product development right, you're gonna have a great product. And um, you know, these are the people who have been paid, people who brought us our food. This is them reading the printouts that we do so they can get the right measurements and, and all that. This is how they do it. And they have visited their, their, uh, their kitchen and you know, they've got a whole bunch of great stuff. And this is why we're gonna leave this bread to you. you know, and they work and they've been doing it, it's great. So um, I hope this helps. Thank you. And if you were wondering, this is links. <laughs> Loadingbigcycle.com in real time on a MacBook Air on you know, Files. <laughs> it took that long to load and render the text and just move paging through it. And you know, we don't have a lot of text content yet, and, and it's kind of fun really, but but you know, this is links. And so it's better if you're if your web service like all your users are links, you know, by putting a little free <laughs> <laughs>